Zoom master for today. And this has this program has been brought to you by District 27 Toastmasters. And now we'd like to tell you more about our special guest for today, Greg Gazin. Greg Gazin has been a Toastmaster for almost 20 years, a six-time distinguished Toastmaster and past District 42 director. Greg is a proud member of two clubs, new entrepreneurs and GoPro speakers in District 99, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. When he's not Toastmastering, Greg, known as the Gadget Guy, has been a serial entrepreneur, a syndicated tech columnist, speaker, leadership development facilitator, blogger, and avid podcaster. In 2009, Greg was recognized by Toastmasters International with a presidential citation for his use of technology to benefit the Toastmasters community. For 15 years, he's produced the award-winning Toastcaster podcast and co-host, and since 2014, produces the official Toastmasters International podcast, along with Ryan Levesque. Greg also authored Corey Outsmarts the Butterflies, helping readers 8 through 80 learn the secrets of building confidence and communication skills. Greg started his career as a quiet introvert, but credits Toastmasters for getting him out from behind the keyboard to places he's never dreamed of. I would now like to hand it over to Greg, Greg Gazin at this time. So hi, Greg, how are you? I am fantastic on this beautiful, beautiful morning. It's 11 a.m. where you are, it's 9 a.m. where where I am, and I'm sure there's probably people from all around the world. Are we good Excellent. to go? Yes, and you know what? You bring up a good point. Write us in the chat. We want to hear from you. Where are you Zooming in from today? So there's drop in the chat. Where are you Zooming in from today? And with that, Greg, I'm gonna hand it over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster Victoria. Virginia, DC, North Carolina, Isle of Wight, UK. Wow. Oh, at least it's afternoon and not middle of the night for you. Excellent. That's awesome. Well, to be on the safe side, I'm basically going to say good day, right? It's something that we do say here in Canada a lot, eh? But nevertheless, I am excited to be presenting podcasting from three sides of the mic. And to begin with, I am curious. So oh, look at that. We're still coming in. Maryland, Maryland, Maryland lots of Maryland. Okay. Victoria, if you could throw up our first poll, poll number one, I'm very curious to see where everyone is at with podcasting, whether it's something that you have a podcast, you're planning on starting one, prefer to listen to one, or you're totally new to it. Let's take a moment. We'll let that poll run for a second. And while we're doing that, I will share my screen. Let me take a second for it to come up. <clears throat> chat has disappeared, so I can't actually see the chat. Well, that's wonderful. Okay. And just the the poll that came up, um, forty seven percent, thirteen percent. I have a I have my own podcast. 47% I'm planning on starting a podcast and then 40% I'm totally new to podcasting. Excellent. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is since I can't see the chat on that screen, I have another computer here and I'll keep it beside me and I'll have to read the chat from it. So as we get started with, as we get started this morning, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, I'm glad that there's somebody, there's nobody here that just wants to listen. That's okay. But even if you just want to listen, that's just totally fine, actually. <laughs> so for those of you, again, you're, most of you sound like you're familiar with podcasting. And again, just a couple of interesting, interesting fun facts. Uh, the term podcasting was coined by a guy named Ian Hammersley back in 2001. He's a BBC journalist. He took the word broadcast and he put, took the word iPod, put them together and created a 
podcast. And again, a podcast is primarily an interview. It's basically an internet radio show that you can listen to over the internet, download it, listen to it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, just to share what we're going to talk a little bit about here today is we're going to look at discovering the value of podcasting and why podcasting is really important beyond just listening to a podcast. I'll share a few examples of podcasts. We won't play any audio for the sake of time, but I will point you to a number of the resources. We'll look at tips on creating a podcast. And along with podcasting, to have a really good quality podcast, we'll talk a little bit about questions and interviewing techniques. And again, no session with the gadget guy is complete. Not in, is not complete without talking a little bit about gadgets. There's two other items that are not on there. The first one is we will have a Q&A following the session. And finally, we are going to have fun. Hopefully we'll have fun. Now, you can laugh at my expense. So you can laugh with me or you can laugh at me. Either way, that's fine. We just want to keep things pretty exciting. Now, as a Toastmaster, I will be grateful at the end. We'll, there will be a survey sent out. We'll also ask you to drop some info into the chat window. I really want to know in terms of what was useful here today that you learned today, things that you perhaps you're glad that I talked about and then other things, well, it's like, yeah, it's okay, but I didn't really need to, to hear that. Again, be, be reasonable, be fair, but, but be honest. Now, I just want to approach the, we'll call it the elephant in the room, because I'm thinking that some of you might be thinking in the back of your minds, well, Greg, you know, podcasts are great, but you know, what about YouTube? What about Instagram? Isn't video going to do to audio? Isn't video going to do to, to audio what sort of DVDs or what Netflix did to DVDs and what the radio, what the, um, what TV did to radio? And in some respects, I can see where you're coming from. However, I want to impress upon you that podcasting does have its place. And that there are times where podcasting, you'll find that audio may surpass the need for video, but it also at the same token, they can live in peace and harmony together. Just to show you that podcasting is alive and well, here's some statistics. A third of Americans age 12 and up regularly consume podcast content. And that, that, that figure is pretty, pretty consistent with respect to Canada and some other parts of the world. And then 78% of Americans ages 12 and up are aware of podcasting. Now, when I first started podcasting back in 2006, there were about eight or 9,000 podcasts. 10 years later, that grew to about 80,000 podcasts. And by 2018, mid 2018, it was about a half a million. I'm just wondering if you can guess how many podcasts do you think there are as of this year? Anyone? Throw it in the chat. No answers in the chat. Three million, five million. Oh, okay. Hopeful. <laughs> 1.5 million. Okay. Okay, we're zeroing in on it. The answer is two million. Now, to be frank, there's probably a number of them that are not necessarily active. So even if we took that number and cut it in half, a million. Now, there are 48 million podcast episodes that have been aired. So that's each podcast has multiple episodes. So as you can see, the numbers are quite significant. And in my opinion, they're not really going to be going anywhere fast. When I think of podcasts, and again, sometimes people go, oh, podcast. I try to use the analogy of likening a podcast to a pen. If you think about a pen, right, little pen here, little analog device, it's, think about it. Oops, you can't really see it with the, yeah, there you go. It's portable, you could use it anywhere, it's easy to use, it's non-intrusive, you can pull it out of your pocket or your purse and use it. And it's, it's something that it's just so easy to use. If I use the analogy of podcasts, then I'll use the analogy of pens. Again, a podcast is extremely portable, you can listen to it while you're while you're walking, you can listen to it in the car, you can listen to it while you're doing while you're doing dishes. Again, very easy to use, but also easy to edit. If you are creating podcasts, and let's say somebody says a word that they're not supposed to, and you don't really want to destroy all of the all of the content that you've created, you can easily edit something in. There's a whole bunch of us and ums and errs or miscues. 
you can easily do that. If you do that with video, you're going to see a lot of a lot of jolting back and forth, a lot of cutting. The other thing about podcast, and you'll find this interesting, is that according to Nielsen, 80% people will listen to 80% of your podcast content. Now, podcasts can be two minutes, they can be two hours. Sweet spot, in my opinion, is about 20 to 30 minutes. So if someone, if you're delivering content or you're doing an interview or you're trying to sell a product or a service or do a promotion, then if someone is listening to 80% of, of your content, that's, that's pretty cool. Also, the non-intrusive part, I've seen people driving, watching video on their car, not necessarily a good idea, but you can really multitask with audio. You can be, again, you could be walking, you could be doing dishes, you could even be listening to while you're, you're actually working. So it's something that's non-intrusive. The other really cool thing is that with audio, you can serialize them so easily into episodes and seasons, and you could have sets that you can have. And with all the players that are out there, you can easily access the ones that you're looking for, as opposed to trying to see if you can hobble together a, a video playlist. So here is just that little statistic on the screen. If you're on a phone, it might be hard to see, but again, 45% listen to most of the episode, 35% listen to the entire episode. So again, podcast is alive and well, but it looks like from our little poll that we're not going to really have to convince any of you out there about that. <laughs> Here's a few more statistics to share with you. 52% driving, 46 traveling, 40% while walking. Also, many people are now listening to more podcasts at home because of the advent of the smart speaker, right? Hey, Google, hey, Siri, play me the latest Toastmasters podcast. Okay. Now, as Toastmasters, you'll find that in many respects, a podcast can be like a speech. They're there to entertain you, to educate you, to inform you, and to persuade you. Now, again, there isn't a visual, but if you can create some compelling stories, people can create the visuals in their minds. And you'll find that as Toastmasters, podcasts will be a very valuable source of information. And in many respects, a, a true example of the practical applications to what we learn and what we do in Toastmasters. And you can use them in your work life and your personal life. Now I see a hand being raised there. If we could keep the questions until the end. And also if you could please direct your questions to Victoria because she'll be sharing them at the end. I just wanna to try to keep the time, the time tight for everyone. There is a lot of, quite a number of people on the call and I just wanna keep the time tight so that I can finish within, within time for you if that's okay. Because I see, Treetop Toastmasters, you have your hand up. So if you wouldn't mind just referring that back to Victoria, I'd really appreciate that. Okay. Interesting statistic on podcasting that 74% number of surveys were done on the average, about three quarters. People listen to podcasts to, to, be, to learn something new. But interestingly enough, when asked when the most desired podcast is, it, the, the topic happens to be comedy. So I guess you can learn stuff from comedy. <laughs> okay, I thought that's funny. <laughs> Nevertheless. Okay, the two podcasts that I'm involved with are the Toastmasters podcast and Toastcaster Communication Leadership and Learning Lab. And I am just pretty curious to find out whether or not we're doing a good job letting people know about the podcast. Just Victoria, if you could roll poll number two, please. I am curious as to whether or not you listen to the podcast or not, or if you've heard of it. And I see <clears throat> the answers coming in. So I'm going to end the poll in just a moment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, looks like we need to do a little better job of Promoting the Toastmasters podcast. No, you listen to the podcast. No, okay, I wasn't aware of it. 21%. Okay, it's not too, too bad. But of course, we, de we definitely have some work to do. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing that, Victoria. Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar, the Toastmasters podcast is the official podcast of Toastmasters International. It was, it's been around since about 2009. We have 191 current episodes. And the fellow on the left is Bo Bennett. The fellow on the right is Ryan Levesque. Bo and Ryan created the podcast back in 2009. 
And currently, Ryan and I are the current co-hosts. Bo is working in the background. Now, when you're creating a podcast, you always want to have a why, right? Just like when you're creating a speech, there needs to be a message or there needs to be a reason for you creating it. Now, the Toastmasters podcast is created independently, but we work in conjunction with the magazine. So what happens is that we will typically interview people who have been featured in the magazine or we'll interview people who wrote articles. And what we do to add value is we take the material from the magazines. Sometimes we'll, we'll get the articles in advance so that we can release a podcast along with the, with the episode. And then we will dig deeper because what you have in print is quite limited. And sometimes when you read an article, there's some lingering questions that you might have. Now the articles in Toastmaster Magazine are, are very well written and they're very, very valuable on their own. But a podcast allows us again to dig deeper, but also put a voice to the text. Now, I'm not sure if for those of you who were around back in 2015, some of you may know this lady. Her name is Sarah Safari. It's episode 104. Now, Sarah immigrated from the Middle East to the US. Now, her story is about, as you can see the headline there, she was clinging to life on Mount Everest, halfway up Everest, clinging to life, dangling off a rope when the earthquake hit and hit, the earthquake hit Nepal and almost 20,000 people were killed in Kathmandu, right? So it's a great story, but imagine hearing those words coming from her voice. And then as she's speaking, again, no visual, you can imagine what's going on. It was just an absolutely incredible experience. So there's just one example of the value, how, to, how podcasts can add value. Other features that we have is we interview every year the president. We recently interviewed Margaret Page, the new international president. We also, in the beginning of October, we interviewed Verity Price, the new world champion of public speaking. And sometimes what we do is we will create companion pieces. So they're not necessarily directly related to the episode, but they're a great companion piece. So for example, in 2020, Toastmasters did an article on podcasting and it was talking about content. So Ryan and I created episodes 157 and 158. We will share these resources with you later that were on creating compelling content. We had so much information to deliver. So we decided to break it up into two. And then in January, 2021, I was very fortunate that I wrote the cover story for the Toastmasters magazine called, Is There a Podcast in Your Future? And Ryan and I thought instead of him just interviewing me about the article, we just decided that since it was the end of the year, we thought we would create a podcast episode called Confessions of a Podcast Host. Because what you hear is this nicely packaged finished product, but a lot of stuff happens in the background. Things go wrong. We trip over our words all the time and things happen, lines go down. And typically when we're talking either to the international president or comedians like Judy Carter, maybe some of you have heard of her and she's interviewed, been interviewed a few times. So of course, when that happens, Judy Carter will never let you forget that something went wrong. <laughs> and again, if you listen to the episode, you'll, uh, you'll get that one. So again, these are some examples of what's available and it's a really nice Nice companion piece. So again, this is a really good why for, for creating a podcast. The next one is Toastcaster. It's like Toastmaster, but with a C. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the legacy program, there was a high performance leadership project. I think now there's a distinguished Toastmaster project or a DTM project. So back in 2006, Toast podcasting was its, in its infancy. And I thought that I would create a podcast for the, for the district. So I interviewed the the district governor at the time, that was back in 2006, was released in 2007. In fact, when we did the recording, our district governor was not high tech. So I talked to her on the phone with the little plunger that you stick into the receiver that you attach to the receiver to record the, re the conversation. And that's, that's what we did, did back then. We currently have about 153 episodes and, and still going. Again, it started off primarily for Toastmasters, but it shifted to being more communication and leadership in general nature. We do interview many Toastmasters. And part of the idea there is to make it off, to offer it to the broad public to also get them interested 
in Toastmasters. So it's also a great Toastmasters promotional tool. A couple of interesting episodes of, of memory. The created the episode 80 was called Origins of April, sorry, the origin of April Fool's Day. And that came about because I was the Toastmaster the evening and I told a story about the origin of April Fool's and the club, the members found it quite fascinating. So I expanded on it. I also wrote an article that was published on it. Another one, I'm not sure if anyone here is a fan or have, have seen the movie Top Gun. Anyone here? Top Gun? Yeah. No, I did not get to interview Tom Cruise. That would have been a lot of fun, right? However, I did have something that I can consider second best. I got to interview a fellow named Dave Biobaranic, and it's episode it? 144, and it's called Leadership Lessons from a Top Gun Instructor. He was one of the guys, he's an F-14 Rio. He had released a new book, and so I had an opportunity to chat with him. So we talked about leadership lessons flying in a plane. He did work with the group on Top Gun. He was actually one of the guys that was flying in the plane when you saw the flyovers. He was sitting in, in the back. So having a great discussion with him, that was quite, that was quite phenomenal. Again, so then these are examples of, of podcasts. Again, some of them are a lot of fun. Well, like I was going to mention, we also interviewed William Hung, remember American Idol? I think that was episode 156. I can't remember if the Toastmasters podcast, because William Hung is is also a, a Toastmaster. One last one I will mention in case you are interested is I had an opportunity of interviewing our CEO, Daniel Rex for Toastcaster episode 128. He made a unexpected visit to Edmonton to celebrate the 50th anniversary of a Toastmaster. You'll have to listen to the episode to get more information. But again, had a frank conversation with him and I learned a lot of things about our CEO that you would never have imagined. And he was actually quite forthcoming in terms of sharing information, in terms of sharing information with me. It was a really great example. And he also talked a lot about leadership as, as well. Now, when we, titled the, when we titled the session called Podcasting from Three Sides of the Mic, you probably wondered, you know, what does that mean? And when I talk about three sides of the mic, I consider both the guest, the host, and the audience. So people, you, you can primarily just listen to a podcast to gain information. You can be a guest, or you could be a host. You could be the interviewer. Now, the obvious opportunity, of course, is just being a listener where you can absorb all of the information. But what you might find after this session is that as a Toastmaster and interested in podcasting, you're going to naturally want to start dissecting each episode. You're going to listen for all the ahs and ums. You'll do evaluation. You'll look at the content. You'll look at the structure. You'll look at how the presenting is being done so that you can try to improve on your own. And that's actually a great way of, of doing it. So again, that's as a listener, that's what you can do. The second opportunity could be as a guest. If you think about it, isn't that a great way to practice those impromptu speaking skills, right? Those table topics that you get every week or every two weeks at your meeting. But also being a guest, it's a great way to let the world know that you have a product, you have a service or a skill that you want to show. So not only can you showcase that, but you can also showcase your presentation skills. And if you think about it, if let's say, if we take that 2 million podcast number and we cut it in half, we'll say 1 million, there's probably a lot of podcasts out there that are looking for guests. You can also use it to promote, to promote your club. Peter Kosowan, he is the gentleman. He's the reason why Daniel Rex came to Edmonton back in 2019. He has been a Toastmaster for 51 years. He's created 171 clubs and he's 92 years old. He said, always make sure that you get credit for your speech. Getting paid is good too, but at least you want to get you want to get credit. Of course, we all know that there is the level four elective in Toastmasters, creating a podcast in Pathways, but there also might be other opportunities and other projects to be able to get credit for, for what you're doing. So we're going to think about creating a podcast. You're wondering, okay, well, some people may know, some of you already have a podcast, 13% of you have a podcast. That's great. What kind of podcast can you do? So here's a couple of examples of podcasts. You can do club, you can do podcasts for yourself, for your club, for your business. 
You can record speeches, testimonials. You can even record just ramblings into your phone, never to be heard by anybody, if that's exactly something that you want to do. But here's, here's a couple of examples on the screen. As you can see, that one podcast was talking about the importance of your club vote at the international convention. Look at that. Out of 11,000 votes, it was a difference of four. Of course, I'd have to go back in for a recount, and I wish I could remember who won, but there was a recount, and there was a, they did, the numbers did change. The numbers did change. The one in the middle is just an example of an app. I interviewed the creator of an app called Record360, and the whole idea was that he had a secure server so that if you're renting a car, you could take the information before and show the information after and say, well, that scratch was there when I got it. So again, that's just an example, another example of a podcast. And the one on the right, this is a cool one. It's called Let's Learn Turkish. Now, I gave a similar presentation to a district in Turkey last week. And while I was doing that, I thought I would try to learn a few words in Turkish. It was okay. It's still a work in progress. But what I found really fascinating is I found this podcast, but then I looked at the history. I looked at the about page. And the lady, her name was Meltem. She's originally from Istanbul, and she has a Spanish partner, and she moved to Spain. So she wanted him to learn how to speak Spanish. So she created this podcast for him and for the world. And what's really cool, she's got 55 episodes out there. So again, here's another reason to create a podcast that you can share with, with the world. And it's, it's actually quite, it's quite good. There is also, in fact, a podcasting dedicated podcasting club for toast toastmasters called podcasters toastmasters they were they just started about a year ago they're based in the uae they meet the first and third mondays at 7 p.m which i worked out to be about 11 a.m eastern and probably 10 once we change the clock so at least it's not in the middle excuse me in the middle of the night and they focus in on podcasting i was a guest at the club once upon a time and i do visit every once in a while. So again, something to check out if you're interested in something that's very, very, very specific. Okay. Now you're going to create your own podcast. And the beauty of having your own is that you can do whatever you want. Control the message. You can control the content. You can decide who are the guests you're going to be. You can decide if you want to have a co-host, two co-hosts, two guests, or maybe you just want to be you solo on the mic. It's entirely up to you. And that's that's the greatest thing. Also, the beauty of having a podcast is then you could take that material and then repurpose it. Episode 122, I had an opportunity to interview a couple of World Guinness record holders, as well as an adjudicator, a judge. They were trying to promote the Guinness World Book of Records, so they approached me as a journalist saying, can you promote? And instead of just writing and saying, hey, here's the new, here's the new book coming out, what I did is I asked them whether or not they would be willing to talk to me in a formal podcast rather than just an interview. And we can talk about what they've done and then look at some of the leadership aspects that revolve around, around being a Guinness World Record holder. And they agreed to that. So I created a podcast. I then wrote an article that was published, Leadership Lessons from Guinness World Record Holders. And then a couple of months later, my club was asked me to do a last minute speech. And I thought, well, geez, I can talk about what I'm just talking about now. This opportunity of interviewing the world record holders and also the leadership lessons that I learned from, sorry, the leadership lessons that I learned from listening to what they had to say. Then what I did is I then recorded that speech at the club and I released that as another podcast. So that's four things. And then the fifth thing is now I have great material for table topics and perhaps a future keynote speech. So five things from creating one little podcast, a lot of repurposing the content. So again, when we think of often, we're just so busy, we don't have a lot of time. Here's one piece of information, one session that I'm able to repurpose it five different ways. Okay. Now, of course, before you even start thinking about recording the podcast, there's a number of things that you, you really want to think about, right? If you are going to put out a podcast, and you're going to tell the world you're putting it out, you want to let them know, obviously, when it's going to be, and you, you're going to need to be on a consistent schedule. The Toastmasters podcast we release on the 1st and the 15th of every month. 
course, it might, could be the end of the month or the 31st or the end of the month or the 14th, depending on what time zone you're in. But again, you want to share with the world what that's going to be. And you want to think about that because there's going to be some planning that you're going to need to do. You also want to look at your hosting. That's something we will say for the end. And Gianna asked me specifically for you, District 27, and the people listening today for me to touch upon that. So I added a little section at the end specifically for that. So again, your podcast will have to be hosted somewhere. You want to come up with a subject and a name. Again, your why, because seven or eight episodes in, you, want, you don't want to say, well, instead of calling it Greg's podcast, I'm going to call it something else. Toastcaster originally was for Toastmasters, but I, what I did is I rebranded slightly, kept the Toastcaster brand, but I added the communication and leadership learning lab because we like to try different things. So again, I slightly changed the, the title, but I didn't want to change it, change it too much. You also want to decide whether, how you want, what format you're going to have in terms of you're going to do it by yourself, you're going to have a host a co-host, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, that's important for scheduling. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the gentleman who's in the picture there. It's Dan and Jaya Hedi Arachi. He is the 2014 world champion of public speaking. And when I went on full time with the Toastmasters podcast, that was the first interview we did. I'm in mountain time zone. Ryan is in the Eastern time zone. And Dan and Jaya lives in Sri Lanka. So I was the one that had to get up at 4.30 in the morning. So again, if you're going to have a global style podcast, you want to keep in mind that for, uh, for scheduling. Then you want to think about, okay, so how are you going to record it? Again, some certain considerations to have. Is it going to be live? Is it going to be virtual? Is it going to be on the phone, on the computer? Many of you are probably not aware that I, 20 minutes before we started, I got on in almost a little SOS with Victoria because there's a cement truck outside my front window that they're pouring cement next door. And earlier on, it was really, really loud. Now it's not too, too bad. I can still hear it. But again, when things are live, you never know what's, what's going to happen. And of course, this particular session, we're recording it. We're virtual, but yet we have a group that are in, in Virginia that are sitting live watching this. Hi there. <laughs> so again, there are considerations when setting up the recording. Okay. So again, you want to think about how you're going to do it and you want to try to keep consistent as, as possible. Now for starters, many of you will probably start out just in your basement or in your bedroom, maybe in a closet because it's too noisy in your apartment on your smartphone. And you're thinking, okay, what am I going to talk about? So some of the things that you can do is you can tell a story right? Just tell a story like you might tell a story during table topics or in give one of your speeches. You could read a story. Now, reading, not just reading verbatim, like reading a script, that doesn't sound too exciting, but maybe creating an audio book. There is a podcast called Not There Yet. The gentleman's name is Terrence C. Gannon. Gannon. And he's got this incredible voice and he creates, what he does is he takes items from the news, quite often historical, and he'll create a story, his own story about it. And you can just sit and listen to this guy for hours. He's just got that kind of voice that it's like, it's very calm and, and very soothing, sort of like James Earl Jones. I can listen to him for hours and hours and hours. So again, you can read a story. You can have a conversation. In fact, there are a few podcasts where the host is talking into the microphone, pretending he's talking to someone at the other end and responding as if there's someone at the other end and there's nobody. And it's actually kind of cool. Or you can take a club, you can take a speech, a pre-recorded speech that you've got. For example, episode 10 was, <coughs> excuse me, episode 10 was called Toastmasters for the Holidays. And it was a speech I did at the club because I wanted to create, I wanted to do a speech encouraging people to visit clubs. So I visited a club in Montreal, Quebec. I visited a club in San Francisco and a club in Mesa, Arizona. So what I did is I, I did that speech, I recorded it, and I released that as a podcast and I called it Toastmasters for the Holidays. So these are some of the things that you can do if you're not 100% sure where you want to start. Now, we're all Toastmasters, right? Sometimes we get stuck in front of a microphone and we're very apprehensive and it's like, we just talk like this and we're nervous and we're just so worried about getting the content out that we don't remember what we learned in Toastmasters. So you want to remember your Toastmasters training. 
When you're speaking, your excitement and your passion can come through the speaker, can come through the audio, right? How many of you believe that you can hear gesturing through a microphone or through a phone? Anyone? How many of you gesture when you're on the phone? You're walking down the street, you got your earbuds in, you're making all kinds of gestures. Yeah, you do. I know, I know you do. <laughs> they make a huge difference to add impact because people can feel it through the mic. People can feel it through the mic. Your, your vocal variety, again, keep in mind, no image, no visual. So you want to create that imagery, right? You want to add pitch and rate and volume. And then of course, the pause things that are very, very important. And you'll notice a huge difference when you do that. Something that you can, you can practice. You also want to make sure that you articulate the words very well. You know, for some of us, we have a natural tendency of, of speaking very fast. And I've been trying to learn Spanish. And I have a friend of mine who, if she's speaking slowly, I can understand. If she's speaking really fast, I can't actually pick up the words that she's actually saying. But keep in mind, again, if you have a global audience, or some of us just get excited. I get excited quite often. And in fact, I had to post a little note up here saying, slow down, Greg, because sometimes I just go way too fast. So, but I want people to get, because if they're walking or if they're doing dishes or if they're working, they may not, it's not like it's in print where you can go back and read the last line. They can go back and rewind, but the whole idea, try to articulate it. And then of course, I think all of us are really guilty of using, using jargon and, and acronyms. I heard two ladies in the US, I can't remember which state they were in, they were promoting Toastmasters on a radio station. And they were doing a phenomenal job being true ambassadors for Toastmasters. But they kept saying CCs and ACs and DTMs and DCPs. And I'm going, no, no, because the people there don't understand. They don't know what those mean. If you are going to use them, explain them. Okay. My good friend, Greg Van Borsum in Australia, and I'll mention him a little later. He tells me that, you know, he's really bad for using a lot of the Australian vernacular. <laughs> and if you have acronyms, again, same thing, you want to be careful because I was a member of the Digital Association of Alberta and I was on the, inter I was on the national committee called the Canadian Interactive Alliance. So what acronym is that, right? You tell someone that you're from the CIA, ooh, they're going to be a little afraid. And then of course, sometimes you might need to spell things out. If I have, if I'm, if I'm talking about wonderful different paint colors and I have a website called Color Your World, just to make things up. In Canada, it's C-O-L-O-R. Nope, sorry. In the US, it's C-O-L-O-R. In, in Canada, it's C-O-L-O-U-R. So again, if it's a website that you need someone to go to, it's probably important that you might want to, to spell it out. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little bit about interviews. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that a lot of you are probably pretty excited about interviewing people, right? Because it's obviously, it's, it's a great, great way to practice and, and hone your Toastmaster skills, but also having interviews. Sometimes you'll hear 20 to 25 minutes of an interview, but we've spoken to that person for maybe an hour. Now, sometimes we have to trim things down for, for time, but you also may have an opportunity if you're speaking to an expert, you might want to get their opinion on something. So you're getting some advice as well. Sarah Safari, her story was so compelling that we spoke to her for 60 minutes. Now, we typically try to keep the podcast to under 30. We went a little over 30 on, on that one. Again, it was, just, it was just so compelling. So it's a great place to, to learn new things. The other thing about podcasting is that it forces you to prepare. You're just going to pick up the microphone and just talk into it yourself. You may not necessarily do all the prep work and all the, all the investigation that you need to do in, when you're inter, instead of when you're interviewing someone. Uh, my co-host, Ryan Levesque, he said to me, one of the things that he learned from podcasting and doing interviews is the ability to learn to establish rapport with an individual. And he found that that even helped him even outside of podcasting. It helped him with, with working with clients. And he thought, I thought that was actually quite good. And again, too, by having interviews, it really focuses, it, uh, it forces you to focus really on the message. Okay. So we're going to have interviews and we're thinking, okay, we need to find some guests. Where are we going to find guests? So at this point, I'm going to ask Victoria to set a timer for five minutes. We'll give you a five minute break. 
If you're live in person in Virginia, then I want you to talk to maybe your person sitting next to you and see if you can come up with some ideas in terms of where are some of the places that you can find guests. And whenever you're ready, just start throwing those into the chat. So we'll take a five minute break. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Greg. So five minutes, we'll be back at, I'm Eastern by the way. Um, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. So 1147 Eastern, okay. all right. So 47 minutes after the hour, wherever you are. Well, actually there could be some in half hour time zone. <laughs> Just gauge five minutes. And I'll drop it in the chat as well. We'll see you in a few. Looks like we are back. Okay. Let's see what kind of answers that we got. And just to scroll back up to some answers that we Family received. Family school, after news stories, church. Thank you, Valda. 
Is that Fel the Ford accredited speaker? We did interview on the Toastmasters podcast. So everyone check that out. Nick says work, hobbies, local groups such as Rotary Club. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Awesome. Now that music is courtesy of Dan Gideon. He's a friend of mine, this D Giddy music. And that's another thing, of course, it's because this likely will be posted on YouTube. And if you are going to use music in your podcast, you need to make sure that you have permission. And if it is public domain, just for Creative Commons, you might want to do a little research on that and just make sure that you have the right to use it. By all means, make sure that you never use like, you know, Coldplay music or Beatles music because you need licensing rights for that. You don't want to get yourself into, into hot water. Okay, now do I need to reshare my screen again? I guess yes. I probably, I guess I have to here. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. You're welcome. Great. And thank you everyone for your comments. Appreciate that. I'm glad you're finding this valuable. Okay. And now the chat popped back up on my screen. That's just totally bizarre, but oh well. Okay, so here's some examples again. You can find friends, experts, so all different types of social media, magazines, and of course, Toastmasters. Another place is if somebody, again, is promoting a new company, if they're promoting a product or a service, promoting a new book. I get a lot of pitches from people trying, telling me that they've got this great new book. And if it's something that will fit in with what we're talking about, then great, right? With um, Dave Biobaranic, he was promoting his, his book and uh, his, one of his PR firms actually approached me and said, we see that you do a podcast. And I said, you know, I'd be happy to talk about it if, as long as we can focus in on the leadership aspect, because that's what, that's what our podcast is about. So great. Thank you. Keep in mind, there are lots and lots of places that you can find, find guests. And if you're afraid to ask someone, this is a takeoff of Wayne Gretzky, famous hockey player, where he said, you won't score on hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Well, my take on that is, if you want to interview someone who likely doesn't know you, you'll likely never get to interview them unless you ask them. Now, of course, if you're reaching out to someone, you certainly want to let them know the reasons why. Why do you want to interview? What's in it? What's in it for them? Because some people might get a lot of requests, in which case you need to figure out a way of, is there a value in it for them? Is there something that they can take away from it? And I have this fantastic little example for those of you who are old enough to remember the Beatles, I guess. I guess the Beatles are pretty popular. But if you remember disc jockeys, the disc jockeys at one time, they were so very powerful. And in Canada, our famous disc jockey here, his name is Red Robinson. In the US, you had, we have people like Howard Stern, you've got Casey Kasem, you've got Marie the K. And uh, what was the other guy? Wolf, oh, Wolfman Jack, right? Wolfman Jack was actually the, the popular DJ in the US. Well, I was reaching out to a fellow named Red Robinson because I wanted to interview him. Red Robinson had introduced the Beatles in 1964 at the first Canadian Beatles concert. And there was quite a controversy that happened that night. And that's why this, this story is, is somewhat famous, although it got overshadowed by the fact that the next day, the Beatles were playing at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles. And of course, I think most of you are, have heard of the Beatles Live at the Hollywood Bowl album, where part of that album was, was recorded. And what had happened that night was in Vancouver is that Red Robinson was the MC. He was the introducer. The crowd got rowdy. Now, for those of you who remember the old black and white Beatles footage, the rowdy crowds, the teenage girls screaming and going crazy. Well, the police were getting concerned that the crowd was getting rowdy. They started to push the stage and they were afraid that someone was going to get hurt. So Brian Epstein, who was the Beatles manager, asked Red to get on the stage and get them to quiet the crowd down. Otherwise, the Beatles were going to leave. So he gets up on the stage. John Lennon has no idea what's going on. And he says to Red, he says, get off my bleep stage. And then, of course, Red points to Brian. John looks at Brian. Everything is OK. But then what happens is that the crowd doesn't settle down and 22 minutes into the concert, the Beatles left. Now, Beatles concerts weren't very long to begin with, but they left. And of course, they didn't even go to their hotel. They just went right to Los Angeles. So 
Red was promoting a book and there's a, there's a longer story, but to, get, to make the long story short, I asked him for the opportunity to interview him about what happened that night and to talk about his book. The pitch was the talking about his book, that that was the value, that was the value for him. And I also did write an article for a, a Beatles collector's magazine on that particular topic. So again, I seized the opportunity to, to talk to someone when, when I had an opportunity. Now, when you are getting your guest, you want to make sure that they're comfortable speaking, because sometimes you might interview an author, and that author might have never done any public speaking at all. So you want to make sure that, that they're comfortable. But also at the same time, don't make any assumptions. Don't assume because somebody is a professional speaker that they're going to be comfortable. There was a gentleman that I interviewed. He was a platform professional speaker, gets many thousands of dollars for a short little keynote. And he said to me, he said, Greg, you know, I want to make sure I don't sound stupid. You know, does this sound okay? I didn't sound stupid. And I thought to myself, you know, he told me he was a little nervous. And I thought, you're nervous. I'm nervous. I mean, I'm interviewing some famous person. And it turns out that he's great on the platform, but one on one, he's a little uncomfortable. So you want to try to gauge it. And the way of easing somebody in is you, you got to get them to forget the microphone. What you do is you just start talking to them, hit the record button quietly, start talking to them and asking them, you know, how their day is going. And if it's snowing somewhere, or if they have children, ask them about their kids, just have this casual conversation and just get them going, maybe say something funny, get them to laugh. And then you're there. And what they don't realize is that they're already talking to you. The interview's already started. Now that part you will cut out for the most part. Although it's possible if you're doing a live episode, you might want to do a little chit chat up front, but that, that it works. If you want to try that, that actually, that actually works. The other thing you want to do is it also warms them up. The other thing you want to do is let them know some of the do's and don'ts. And for example, you want to make sure that they turn off their furnace, which I forgot to do. And my furnace now just kicked in. You want to make sure that the lighting is okay. If you are doing in fact a, a zoom type call. Have them be careful about rustling papers, depending where their microphone is. And also, if they need to start and stop again, just have them do that. If, they, if there's a question that they don't really like the way they answered it, or if they tripped over their words, which Ryan and I do all the time, then you just say stop, have a little pause, and then you continue on. My good friend Lance Miller, God love him, he speaks so fast that I can't figure out I, can't, I just can't clip. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't stop. He, is, he, he offers phenomenal value. He gives us extended interviews, with a lot of great valuable information. But I got to say, slow down, Lance. Just a little bit, Lance. Slow down. Lance, is, of course, is the 2005 world champion of, of public speaking. Okay. You also want to try to make it sound as natural as possible. And we've had a couple of individuals who are so well prepared that they were reading every single line. And in which case, you, if you can, if you feel comfortable, stop them and just ask them if they can just sort of share the story, ask them how they feel about something or what their opinion is on something. And so that won't, it won't, it'll make it sound a lot more, a lot more natural. And as you, the host, you set the tone. So if you're all nervous and unprepared and all frazzled, then they're going to feel that way as well too. And you know what? Sometimes things, things will go wrong. Just a matter of figuring out how to how to deal with it. Now, when you're the guest, and this, is, this can also be information that you can share with your guests, but if you are going to be a guest on a show, which can happen, is you wanna make sure, obviously you wanna make sure that you're gonna be prepared. Sometimes what will happen, that little picture of me is, I had gotten, I, was, I stood up during a, an entrepreneur conference and I made a comment and I asked a question and I made a comment. And afterwards, a group came up to me and they wanted to know they thought that the question was fascinating. They wanted to talk to me about why I was thinking the way I was thinking. So of course, I had to quickly just be prepared. Now, on the screen there, it says prepare for the obvious. And that you might think, well, what are some of the things that are obvious? Well, I interviewed a gentleman who, again, was pitching a book. He had a special event. And when I asked him to tell me like when and where it was going to be, he said, oh, well, my publicist takes care of that. I'll get that to you later. Now, yes, we were able to put that into the show notes after the fact, but again, that was sort of a missed opportunity. So think about some of the things that you might need to have prepared, ready in front of you when, when you're going to be speaking. You want to determine the expectations. Again, you only have a short period of time. 
the topic that you're talking about might be broad. In my case, it could be Toastmasters, it could be podcasting, it could be interview techniques, it could be gadgets. So it's, it's good to know in advance what's expected so that you can try to prepare. Uh, watching the jargon, we already talked about that. And also sharing relevant examples instead of just spewing out simply facts and figures, because sometimes facts and figures don't mean anything. Like for example, you would say a third of, of Americans will do something. Well, you know how many people are in the US. So I think it's about 330 million. Well, some people in the other parts of the world aren't familiar with that. So you look at a statistic, you try to see if you can find some context for it. I remember we had our district training one year at the Mall of America. And I love the fact that they have these little fat, fun fact cards. And they said that the Mall of America is 4.2 million square feet. Now, I'm not an architect, I'm not a designer, and I can't really picture what 4.2 million square feet is. But on that fun fact card, they said that you could fit 32 747 jumbo jets inside the mall. You could also lie down 258 Statues of Liberty. So that might give you some context. So again, if you're trying to use that, use analogies, use stories, and, and give some context. And of course, you want to try to be as concise as possible. I was once interviewed for a television segment. They interviewed me for, I think, 10 minutes, and they aired 20 seconds. They'll pick the sound bite. So you want to try to be as concise as possible, because sometimes you don't know what they're going to, what they're going to cut. We had a guest on the Toastmasters podcast, and he was sharing a very gut-wrenching story about his wife that was killed by a drunk driver. And he, we asked him, and we probably could have narrowed the question down a little more, but we just asked him to tell us a little bit about what happened because it was a very sensitive topic. And he said, he, he talked for, he spoke for 10 minutes. Neither Ryan nor I had the heart to cut him off. So we actually just let it go. But when he was done, of course, he was a Toastmaster. And we said, is it possible for you to redo that in three to four minutes, which, which he actually did. So you want to try to be as, as concise as possible. When you're looking at interview questions, you want to try to avoid any, oops, let me go here. Yeah. When you're looking at interview questions, and I see our time is running short, so I'll try to little, progress a little faster here. We well, want to try to avoid, avoid surprises. Now, quite often, if you know CBS Channel 4 News comes up to you, sticks a microphone in your face, if you're a politician, they might want to try to trip you up in terms of, of what you're saying. I'm looking to make sure that I have a good conversation and that that adds value for for the audience. I look at a win, win, win. So I win, the podcast wins, the audience wins, the guest wins. I guess that's a win, 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 win. A gentleman named Greg Van Borsum, I mentioned him earlier. He is there next to Charlie Theron in the middle. He was featured in the 2015 issue of the Toastmaster magazine, and he's a master marksman, a bodybuilder. He was the dance scene coordinator for Happy Feet, which is the movie with the penguins I think most of you are probably familiar with. He was also the fight scene coordinator and weapons coordinator for Mad Max Fury Road. In fact, he taught Charlize Theron how to shoot a gun. Now, in the article, he had talked about there was 15 years between the two Mad Max movies. And at that time, life had gotten very challenging. Life was challenging in Australia where he was at. A number of friends had taken their lives. And he was actually thinking of taking his own life, committing suicide. And then he looked at his children and he decided not to. Now, I wouldn't want to pop the question to him and say, hey, you know, in the article, it says that you wanted to take your, no. So I politely asked him whether or not that would be okay. And he was quite amenable to it. In fact, he is now an accredited speaker. He speaks on suicide prevention. He works with a lot of groups and associations. And I asked him, Greg, I said, if I want to approach someone, not with the fear of, I don't want them to relive this horrible, some horrible event that happened, how would I approach it? And one of the things he said to me, he said, Greg, he said, maybe give, use phrasing like, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Because it might help me or it might help the audience understand a little better. And he said that if you come from a place of learning and a place of sharing, he said that you're going to get a positive response. And I did actually try that a couple of times and it worked really, really well. Again, you want to certainly focus on that outcome rather than just a general question, instead of saying somebody, well, you know, what do you do as a CEO? You might want to just say, you know, what's it like being a CEO? What's a typical day like being a CEO? So that will also help you focus on the outcome. It's also a little bit more, it'll also lead to a more authentic type 
type answer, more original response. Keep it open-ended again, not just ask questions that have one or two word answers. And then if someone says something and you're not 100% sure, ask for understanding. If they use an, used an acronym or if they used a localized word, right? You wanna say, okay, what does, what does that mean? And then this one here, the obvious might surprise. This one is kind of funny. You know, sometimes you'll ask a question and you'll get the standard answer. There's a lady named Will, uh, Lily Wexu. She's a voiceover actor, primarily. She also appeared on Grey's Anatomy. She's trilingual. She's originally from Canada, but she now lives in the US. And she was also featured in, she was featured in one of the episodes of the Toastmaster magazine. And we asked her the question of why she joined Toastmasters. That's a question we always like to ask. And she said, well, her mom was thinking, her mom had suggested her to, to join Toastmasters, but the question was just, what followed was just incredible. She said to me, she said that I had a bout of acne. So she needed to spend some time away from the camera, right? Because these days with 4K and 8K, you know, things show. So that was her motivation at that time to join Toastmasters. And that was just, that was just an incredible story. Now we're going to head over to the hardware because I know that's something that some of you geeks and gadget people are probably interested in. So you want, of course, you want to try to start make, making sure that you start with the best, best possible audio that you have. You want to try to record it in one sitting because environmental sounds will change. You want to have a redundant recording in case something goes wrong. I have an iPhone here that I'm recording my session on, but I'll typically have a secondary recorder because if something goes down, you may not have the audio, in which case you might be able to use the audio that you have. Or if you're like me, who's very forgetful, then you gave, a, you gave an answer to a question and you have to re-answer it. And you don't remember exactly what you said because sometimes those golden nuggets come out when you least expect it. Well, there's an opportunity to go back and listen to what you said. You want to record some noise in a noise test at the beginning. Again, sometimes you'll, you're talking to someone, there's an air conditioning running, they can't turn it off. You could sample a little bit of that. And there are some tools that can try to try to remove it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You also want to try to record on multiple tracks, because if you and I are speaking, chances are we might talk over each other, or you might think I'm finished speaking and you start talking and vice versa. In which case, if you've got two separate tracks, you can separate the audio. If it's all on one track, you can't. And then when you're done, keep recording because sometimes people will say the most incredible things when they're done. Robert Cravallo is a newer, is an accredited speaker from a few years ago. And he talked, told us about his accredited speaker journey. And one of the things that he had said after we stopped the official recording was he used the analogy of fine tuning his speech to, to washing and cleaning his, his Harley Davidson. And we thought, this is so cool. So we took that clip and we found a place and we, we inserted it. We inserted it later on. I think what we're going to do now is, Victoria, I think we're going to pass on the third poll just for the sake of time. And we're going to just talk a little bit about, oops, our, oops, what are we talking here? We're going to talk a little bit about getting started. So here on the Toastmasters podcast, we, we will record. If, I'm rec if we're recording locally, there's a lot of free products that you can use, and that's what we use. We use Audacity for the, for the Mac, that I use for Audacity for the Mac. So it's available for PC and Mac. We use GarageBand as well. So we're, then we'll also use, um, we used to use Call Recorder for Skype, but what we found was that Skype only allows two tracks. So if we've got two hosts and one guest, there'll be two people on one track. You're also a lot more at the mercy of the internet. We use a program called Zencaster and I'll show you a screenshot afterwards. Zencaster, uh, what it does is it records remotely at each location and then it's uploaded to the cloud. There's a free version, there's a paid version, which does even higher res audio. There's also a, a video version of that. And then of course there's Zoom, which we're, which we're using right now. Zoom does has a feature, checkbox feature that you can allow for multiple recordings or multiple tracks. Challenge of course with that is that if you've got 10 people, it's, you're gonna have 10 separate audio tracks. But sometimes that's something that you might you might want to use. So here's a screenshot of Zencaster. As you can see, this was just a screenshot I took after the fact. Ryan and I were talking to Victoria Salem. She happened to be in Mexico. No, she in Mexico? Yeah, she was in Mexico at the time. And as you can see on the right, there's the MP3s that are generated and there's a text box that's cut off that you can see over there. So just give an example. It's done through the web, works best with Microsoft Edge and Chrome. 
This is Audacity that we use. Again, you can see we've got three different tracks there. It's a free program, available PC and Mac. And then what we do is we take the final output from Audacity and then we put it into GarageBand where we have the beginning and the end and some of the intro and outro music. Some people will do it all in one program. It's entirely up to you. And then from there, we upload it to the Toastmasters podcast where Bo Bennett hosts his uh, private server and that's where it comes from. But then we also, it's also on the Toastmasters podcast, Toastmasters website, also available on Apple, Google, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Here are a few types of recording devices. If you're not sure what to use, I recommend getting something. It's not ideal to record using your internal microphone and your internal speaker because you will probably get noise and you'll probably get feedback. Worst case scenario, try to use at least one, but there are some inexpensive devices that you could use not like these two up here. The Zoom H6 is great for remote recording. As you can see, the different mics that you have on there, it also allows up to the input of six different, six different microphones. You can have six people on at the same time. PodTrack P4, again, it's another recording device that's specifically for podcasting. And again, I'll be sharing a PDF of all these slides with you afterwards. If you want to get an inexpensive lav mic, this one's from IK Multimedia. I think it's about $49. And the beauty about this one, it's got a second port on it so that you can hook up a second mic. Unfortunately, it's one track. But at the same time, if you're trying to record directly into a phone, works, works great. And the second port can also be used as a monitoring. So you could actually plug in a headphones or earbuds and you can listen to what's going through the mic. Because it's really important to know what's actually passing through the mic. Because you might think it's working, but it might not be working. Here's a couple of other ones. These are fairly common. This, the Yeti, Snowball, and Blue. Again, you could do Google searches on those. And then just to show you, microphones can be placed in different places. The Go mic sits on your desk. It's a little tiny portable mic that folds over. The Go mic Connect sits on the top of your laptop, up on the top of your screen. And then the Q2U, which is what I'm using right now, that one I use primarily for, for desktop recording. And if you've got a really unlimited budget, you can go with, you can go with wireless. Now, I will like, Victoria, if you wouldn't mind sending out poll number four, I'm actually curious as to where you listen to your podcasts, folks. You want to just share with me where that goes. And while you're doing that, if, you, if you're if you okay with that, I'm just going to keep, keep speaking. Now, when people say, well, I got my podcast on Apple Podcast or Google Podcast or Stitcher, your podcasts are not actually hosted there. Those are actually distribution platforms. So when you listen to a podcast on Apple podcast, it will actually go to wherever your podcast is being hosted. And that's where it pulls the audio from. So there are posts, there are, sorry, there are um, services. Whoops. Go to the next slide here. There are services like Beansprout or sorry, Buzzsprout and Podbean and Blueberry and, and Libsyn. So those are places that will host your, your podcast. Now, you might think, well, I can just put my podcast on my website. If you've got one podcast and you only expect 20 people to listen to it, that's fine. Typical regular websites are not designed for a lot of streaming and a lot of people accessing the audio. In fact, your host may shut you down. It may slow to a crawl. You might say, well, I embed YouTube in my website. Well, if you're embedding a YouTube video, if you think about it, it's actually pulling it from YouTube and then displaying it on your website. You can pull sources like Podbean, for example, which is a service that I use. Podbean will allow you to have little bits of code that I can stick on my website so that the Podbean player will actually show up. So you might want to think about that. There are free services and there are paid services. Free services, services that are totally, totally free. Of course, you're at the mercy of the service and if the service ever goes away. There are other platforms like the one I use, Podbean. Again, I'm not an affiliate. I'm not promoting anything. It's just the one that I use. And it has a free limited amount of time that you could use. And then if you want, you can upgrade to, to a bigger one. The service that I use is $100 US per year. And I find that that's, that's sufficient for me. Okay. So it looks like, wow, 50, 25% Apple podcast, 25% Google podcast, 25% don't listen and 19% other. Okay, good. 
So I'm glad that I kind of mentioned that there are different things. You just want to make sure that you do a Google search on the, on the different platforms. If you are using, if you do want to publish on Apple, you need to sign up with Apple. Just do go to Apple Podcast Creator, just do a Google search on that. You sign up using your Apple ID. And then in your hosting platform, like for example, Podbean, you can enter that ID. You just do it once, you set it up. And then after that, it will always broadcast to Apple automatically, usually within maybe a couple of hours. Other services, a lot of the hosts have built-in checkboxes. So you can say, publish it on Google, publish this on Stitcher, publish it here and there. And they will do that again. You just set it up once and it's done automatically. So we're getting close to we're getting close to wrap here. I thought hope you hopefully you found this this found this valuable. So these are the resources. There's a QR code there. There's also a link and Victoria, if you want, you can also drop that into the chat window. There you'll find a copy of these slides, a PDF copy of the slides, a copy of the article. Is there a podcast in your future? And there's also a document, another document that has a listing of some of the websites or some of the episodes that I that I made reference to. Some of them I just made off the top of my head. So you'll have to listen back to, to the recording when you have that. And I think what we're gonna do now is we're going to go to questions and answers that if you, questions and answers, it'll be Q and A sessions. So if you have any questions, maybe jot them in the chat and hopefully Victoria has been accumulating a few of those. And then after we're done, I'll just, just do a quick recap one minute at the end. So let's go to the questions. What have we got, Victoria? Thank you, Greg. And yes, yes, I have. So let me go from the top. Um, so where when Treetop Toastmasters were here, I think they had to sneak out. Um, they were they were just saying that they saw the term audio podcast, and we're curious: are there other type of podcasts out there? You know, when we talk about podcasts, we typically talk about audio, but yes, there are in fact some people will refer to video podcasting, vid videos as video podcasting. These days, it seems like people are creating podcasts and they're, mirror, they're mirroring them on, on YouTube. So especially in the last couple of years where Zoom has become a lot more easily accessible. And if you go back about two years before the pandemic, there weren't very many people using, using Zoom or there weren't very many people using the web hosting conferences. So yes, you can create that. My recommendation would be is to use a because of the nature of podcasts being so portable, as I explained earlier, is set up your podcast on one of the sites. And then if you want to mirror that on your website or mirror that on, if you want to have a video version of it, there are some individuals that will do their podcast originate as a Zoom call. We like to do a lot of editing and fine tuning and compressing. So we typically stick to, to Zencaster. Also, sometimes if you're talking to people in the middle of the night, they may not be that amenable to a recording session, but if it's audio only and they can be in their pajamas, then they're, they're pretty much okay with it. That's, that's a really good question. So that's something I will maybe mention the next time I do a session is to say, yes, there are video, but we're going to be focusing in on audio. So thank you, Treetop Toastmasters for that question. Next question from Mary. Um, she wanted to get into the techie side of it and you went over that about just software and the equipment needing for, needed for podcasting. Okay. So you sorry, definitely you... hit on that. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Could so, you that again, please? Yes, Mary was just, um, she asked the question, but you did end up going over it on software oh, okay. and equipment needed for podcasting. Okay. Again, just to get started, I mean, you could just start on your phone if you want. And even if you do use your phone on a regular basis, I would highly recommend getting an external mic of some sort. There are some, there were some microphones that plug into the headphone jack. There are some that plug right into the, to the port if you have an, a, phone without a headphone jack. There's a lot of them out there. Just do a Google search. There's just a plethora of them out there. And then again, check out some of, uh, check out some of the reviews. Awesome. Next question going down here. Let's see. Um, Nick, question from Nick. If you use a digital recorder, do you need to use these types of software? Well, if you're, if you're doing, if you're using a digital recorder, it depends on what kind of output your recorder is, is putting out. Sometimes it will put out a proprietary format. And also if you're uploading it to servers, are you gonna be uploading it in a full-fledged way or are you gonna be using MP3? Or if you're using Apple, it's usually the M4A. So you wanna find out what format is, is compatible with whatever service that you're using. So the answer, was, the answer is, is maybe. 
The software though, you can also use for editing. Now there are some individuals that they just record and they just post everything that they record. That's entirely up to them, but you might wanna use some pieces of software if you're looking at doing some editing. I primarily use a computer, but there you could, there's GarageBand that's for your, on your iPhone. There are, there are individuals that strictly use an, a tablet or a phone for doing all of their podcasting. And that is, that is possible. That's not something that I do, but it, it is certainly possible. Thanks for the question. Thank you. And if you would like to ask the question live yourself, you're more than welcome to raise your virtual hand and I will take you off mute. Going down, I um, just want to clarify the pod bean price. So is it 99 a month or a year? They have, ver they have various levels all the way up to professional. The $99, that's per year. It's based on an annual basis. I think it's $12 a month or something US, but typically, typically it's $99 a year. And I would give you, that gives me pretty much unlimited what I, what, as much as I'm going to use. And I typically will do for Toastcaster. I try to do one or two a month for the Toastmasters podcast. Again, we use uh, Bo Bennett's private servers that, that he has arranged. So it depends on how much bandwidth that you're going to use. Some will allow for audio and video podcast, but you also need to be careful because some service providers will, if you've got audio and video in your podcast feeds, they will, they will publish that. So for example, iTunes will do that or Apple podcast. But I think if you're on something like Spotify, if you have even one video in your list of a 20 audio episodes, it, it won't publish. So that's a challenge because earlier on in Toastcaster years ago, we were using flash videos. We were using the formats were so obscure way back when that we were using formats so that with Toastcaster, I'm not able to, to publish on Spotify unless I create a new podcast that has audio only. And I believe it has to be MP3. Again, check with the providers. Some, some are different. Thank you. So well, we have a couple hands raised. So I have a question in the chat and then we're going to go to our hands raised that we have in the room. Question from Kate. Do you find value in using a video platform for interviews um, for an audio podcast? Again, yes, there could be value, but again, we've decided, first of all, with the Toastmasters podcast is just audio only. And with, with Toastcaster, again, because I'm doing, because I'm doing primarily editing, a lot of editing, I like to keep it to that format. There can be value, especially if you want to take some video clips from it. I know there are some individuals that shoot a little bit of video and they'll use that for promotion. If you feel that you could maximize the value by using video, by all means. The other thing that can sometimes happen, depending on who you're talking to, video uses up also a lot more bandwidth. So if there are any concerns with bandwidth and you're worried about losing the connection, then again, video eats up a lot of what's going on. Again, recommendation, and this is the same recommendation for Zoom is try to turn off everything else that's going on in the background because that's eating up all of your bandwidth. If you wanna do video and you're comfortable with it, yeah, by all means. I, I've just been in sort of an audio guy since forever, <laughs> but there is certainly value of recording it as, as a video and then extracting the audio out of it. Excellent. So let's go to our hands raised. So Tommy, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Tommy. Thank you, Greg. Thank you very much. A very full and complete presentation today. And, and here, here's not a curveball, uh, which is to not really follow what you said about surprise pop questions, but we couldn't <laughs> this before, is I think I may not have as much value as I wish for a podcast, but I'd like to call it a podcast. And what I did just to uh, test the waters is I did a Zoom interview with an officer of one of my clubs and I posted it on Instagram, which has strict, if you don't go to their other media, 60 seconds. And I liked it. And I think others did too. What if I continue that format? And then if I feel, oh, some of these do have value, then hook up with one of the hosting podcast people and maybe even go only to audio. But these are Zoom with obviously the uh, video portion, but they were one minute and, and the one minute was, I think, excellent. And I could do it with people who were on the 
on the run, you know, like I'm a busy person. Mm -hmm. I really don't have time. I said, what if I could do it in 59 seconds? And that was the hook. What do you think? Have value? I know. I, I think that's absolutely a great value. In fact, sometimes with a one minute, you might be able to embed it in the website, or maybe you can find one of the free or low cost services. Because if you can, if you can, if you got, let's say 10 or 20 of those and people are on a service where they can just say, okay, listen to the first one, go to the second one. They can listen to one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. There's nothing wrong with that. That sounds like also great promotional material for your, for your website. It's a great promotional material for your club in terms of trying to, if you're talking to an officer, encouraging people to become, to become officers. I mean, anything, anything really goes. Thank you so, for that. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. It sounds it sounds great. If you if you've got the time and the energy to do it, by by all means, absolutely, please do. Start Thank somewhere. You. That's start somewhere. That's the big thing. And then Thank see where it goes. I mean, you could create an episode and then just say, "Oh, I'm not going to publish this." Next question from Nick. Nick, you can go ahead at this time. All right. Thank you. Um, I've been a guest on podcast before. Um, and I know, um, and they've been in person and we've normally had like a mic and also headphones when we've done it. Uh, I bought a, a zoom eight, six, I bought four different mics, I actually got like a mic kit, but then when I opened it up and I was playing around getting used to it, I realized there's only one Jack for a headphone. Um, and, and I think that's really more so for the person doing the interviewing or recording so they can kind of hear and uh, adjust the levels. So my question is, is do I, is it necessary for me to, you know, get some sort of an attachment so that everybody in the podcast can hear through the headphones, or is it just a matter of, it's just good for me to, as an interviewer to make sure stuff is coming out fine and I don't need to worry about headphones for everybody else. I mean, in a perfect world, it would be nice for them to hear what's going through, but you also got to be cautious in, in the sense that you might get feedback. What I typically would like to recommend, and again, that's something maybe I might want to mention the next time I do this session is my microphone has a headphone jack built into it so I can hear what's going through. I think as long as if you're all in the same room, as long as everybody can hear each other, I think that's probably okay. Again, you're not always in necessary and ideal situations. I once did an interview after a club meeting and it turned out that the uh, it was in a bowling alley and the bowling tournament had just started. And, that was actually quite a challenging interview to do because <laughs> we couldn't hear what was going on. But if you can monitor what's going on, that's that's great. You as the host, it's it's the most critical for you to hear what's going on and even ideally hear what's coming, hear what's going through the mic. Some people will actually hook up an external mixer to monitor the entire sound that's that's going through. I mean, you can get really really sophisticated if you want to. Uh, rec- up front, I think you know keep it simple. But then if you find you need more resources than, than by all means continue and, and look at other ways of doing it. Hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your question, Nick. Excellent. All right, so we have one more question before we begin to wrap up. And so the question is from Z. Celeste, it was a very good question. Let me scroll up really quickly. How many people do you recommend work on your podcast? So how many team members should you have? And what roles do you need for the podcast? Well, sometimes it could be just you. (laughs) It really depends on what you're doing. I guess, okay, that's that's a really good question. I'm thinking that, well, obviously you need to have the people who are going to be part of the podcast. You're going to have, if you're interviewing someone, you want to have the host, you want to have the guest. You could have somebody that's remotely monitoring. If you're using Zoom, perhaps you want to have somebody that's monitoring the chat. In terms of editing, again, you you would need a little bit of expertise with, 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 with doing some editing. If you do need that and you find that it's something that you can't do, there are some services like Alitu, it's called A-L-I-T-U, that they'll do everything for you, right? You can pretty much just upload it to the internet. If you want more control, maybe get someone that can help you with the editing. Then you also have perhaps your artwork that you might want to have. You want to create a narrative for each podcast of so someone who could do a little bit of writing. And then you want to upload it to, to make sure that the final product is, is, is complete. So again, it depends on what you want to accomplish, whether you feel that you can do things yourself. Because I know individuals that they just do the recording and then they send it off to a service and they get somebody else to do it. 
But I mean, at minimum, it's just you, but at maximum, again, recording, making sure it's, you know, setting up the equipment, making sure the audio is working, people monitoring the Zoom, editing capabilities, your narratives and your graphics, and then publishing. Thank you, Greg. So that concludes the Q&A, Greg. I want to hand it over to you if you have some just final final words to just get, final get off. Yes, <laughs> final comments. Go ahead. And then Jean has a closing. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on this on this episode today. I, I love podcasting and I get so excited when I hear that there are Toastmasters and individuals that are starting new podcasts. I have people saying, I got this great idea. It's just absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. I know that some podcasts will be created and you'll, you'll see one episode and you'll never see them again, but there are others that are just exploding. In fact, I see in the chat here, was it um, Valda and Rochelle have a podcast? So there, I'm gonna throw, just throw a quick shout out to them. It's called Elevate with Valda and Rochelle, Valda Ford and I forgot, oh my God, don't kill me, sorry. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank, both accredited speakers. I know I'm going to be getting it later on. But anyways, I just want to impress upon you, if you haven't already gained that, is that podcasting is just, it could be so rewarding in terms of being able to pump up your skills. In fact, I've been recording my speeches ever since my icebreaker with my pocket tape recorder to listen back to them. So it can be rewarding in the sense of being able to pump up your skills Doing the interviews can help you practice some of those skills. And it's not just beyond the podcasting, it can help you in your work and it can help you in your, in your personal life. You'll get a lot of really good experience. You'll meet an incredible, incredible number of people. Now, a lot of people are more interested in connections. For me, I, I'm interested in meeting new people. In fact, my closest friends are not only Toastmasters, but they're now podcasters as well. My co-host Ryan Levesque and I, We've met a couple of times in person, international convention. We've set up a booth there, but he lives in Massachusetts and I live in, in, in Alberta, but yet we've become virtually like, like two brothers. And the other thing is, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun. And it's something that you can do even in Toastmasters and get credit for it. So I want to encourage each and every one of you, if you haven't already done so, even those of you who are live at the location before you leave, whip out your phone, talk to the person next to you and just come up with some idea that by the end of the month, you're going to record something. You don't have to publish it, but just record something and go back and listen to it. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. And just real quick, there was this a, uh, the link for the Toastmasters podcast. That's in the resources that you provided. Yes, it's also toastmasterspodcast.com. A number of the episodes are also available on toastmasters.org. Also quite often, if they're attached to an article, they, they're sometimes embedded in the article. You can get the last 25 episodes on Apple Podcasts. You can also get a Google Podcast and a few others. Toastcaster, all the episodes are available on Apple Podcast or toastcaster.com. So just Google Toastmasters Podcast or Toastcaster. And yes, they should be there in the notes as well. Excellent. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate all your expertise and sharing so with much. us. Thank you. And now I'll hand it over to Jean. All right. Again, thank you, Victoria and Greg, especially uh, from on site. They say they learned quite a bit, actually. So oh, awesome. uh, I hope everyone else enjoyed and learned a lot. But before we conclude, there are some exciting announcements. The first one is we have on, uh, on our meeting today, Region 7 advisor, Dana Swarner, and I would like to introduce our dignitary. Dana Swarner is the Region 7 advisor, also formal, former music educator who ran her own piano and voice studio for 18 years. As a result of her tutelage, two of her former students were selected for placement in the prestigious Governor's School for the Arts in Greensville, South Carolina. She now runs Swarner uh, Consulting, where she is a risk management specialist, offering multiple lines of insurance and employee benefits. And as a region advisor, Dana brings her passion for education and training to her district leaders. It is a belief that everyone can benefit from the communication and leadership skills at the Toastmasters teaches. And when we can adequately communicate our ideas with others, lead with integrity, and listen to the needs of those around us, we help make the world a better place. 
And Dana will be talking about some exciting opportunities. Good afternoon. It is absolutely my pleasure to be here with you in this virtual world. Toastmasters, as Greg said, is a phenomenal international organization and being part of it gives you the skills that you need or allows you to hone the skills that you may already have. Obviously, if you want to start your own podcast, you need to be an excellent communicator and you need to have the ability to do impromptu speaking as well as prepared speeches. But here's what you may not know. There are other aspects of Toastmasters which are not so obvious, but vitally important. When I joined Toastmasters, I'm not going to lie, I was a reluctant Toastmaster. My husband drug me to Toastmasters. And here's why. Every now and then, or maybe more frequently than that, some little girl or some little boy would leave the studio in tears. And my husband would say, did you make her cry again? And I said, you do not understand. This is a professional studio. There are standards and I can't help it if they're feeling bad because they didn't do their homework. He said, you know what? Maybe you should work on your communication skills. Not gonna lie, I was mortified. Look, my piano teacher made me cry. I'm just passing the love. But I finally, after three years of cajoling, I finally went to Toastmasters. And the weirdest thing happened. They taught me this evaluation method called PI. And it starts with active listening. So I would think that to be a podcaster, you would actually need to actively listen to your guest. But in my case, it started with actively listening to my club members and then being able to praise them before I instructed them and then leaving them with encouragement. So praise, instruct, encourage. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna prove my husband wrong. I'm gonna use this Toastmasters trick in the studio. And the next time I have a student that's just losing their mind, hasn't done their homework, freaking out about a live or her, uh, performance, whatever, I'm just gonna whip out the pie. So I did, and something very strange happened. There were no tears. And I thought, huh, well, that's an odd anomaly. But oh, well, it's an anomaly. And I tried it again, and guess what? There were no tears. And by the third time, I realized that we did not have an anomaly. We had a system that actually worked and when you're listening and seeking to understand the other person's position and then giving them fade feedback that begins with praise and ends with encouragement, they actually can take that instruction as it was meant to help them improve and they don't take it so personally. So before I got into district leadership and became a region advisor, I became a better piano instructor and children stopped crying in my presence. So if you're considering Toastmasters, I encourage you to just get out there. It is, in my opinion, the best, safest place to not only learn and develop skills, but also develop those relationships to be able to network, to be able to connect with people on an international level. So there's an opportunity here and Gina is going to finish explaining that, but we are looking at forming a brand new Toastmasters chapter centered around podcasting. Gina, why don't you share with us what's up? Thank you, Dana. I'd be more excited. So 
how does this all tie in together with what Greg presented and what Dana was talking about Toastmasters? Well, I am happy to announce, and I dropped in the chat box, so some of you might be aware, is District 27 is going to charter or try to charter its first podcast club called Podcasters Toastmasters. So if you're interested in doing a podcast or you have a podcast, I want to learn how to do your practice speeches, or you can do as an HPL project, or on Pathways Level 4 Elective, there is a podcast elective, you know, great ways to introduce podcasts into Pathways and Toastmasters. So we are going to try to charter a podcaster Toastmaster club in District 27. And if you're interested in joining this club and becoming a chartering member, feel free to reach out to me at cgd at d27-tm.org. Again, this will be sent out in our email, our newsletter, and on our website. So this information will be there. And we're hoping to do an interest meeting uh, slash demo meeting on the 28th. Uh, more details to follow. Again, we'll be emailing everyone to let you know what time exactly and what the link is. But if you're interested, you can feel free to reach out to me at CGD saying that you're interested in becoming a charter member of this club. And we're hoping to get a charter very soon so we can start off our podcast. So again, if you're a podcast aficionado or learning interested in learning more or already have a podcast, this is the club for you. And so at this time, I also like to remind people, uh, you know, email me if you're interested, fill out the evaluation form that was dropped in the link uh, about this meeting, letting us know your feedback on how this went. And of course, if uh, we also have another event, Opportunity Knox, that will be presented by Dana Swarner at 2 p.m. The link was sent out, but you can still register on Eventbrite for this 2 p.m. event. It is also hybrid. And again, I'd like to give a big thank you to Dana and Greg for this wonderful, wonderful presentation. And I hope you all found it enlightening. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Hope to see everyone at the 2 p.m. event. Thank you all. Oh, another podcasters Toastmasters Club. That'll be great. And I'll have to make sure I mention that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first one in District 27, Greg. That's awesome. I hope it gets, I hope it's contagious. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> okay. Well, the cement truck was good. They didn't make too much noise. Yeah, yeah, um, it uh, worked out really well. Looks like people are still on. If people have questions. Yeah, if you anyone guys has a question, questions? I'm here for a few more. I can stick around for a few more minutes. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll stop sharing. Dana, you're muted, by the way. I know that, thank you. I have a very twitchy little mouse over here. Yes, I can stay on as well for a few minutes if anyone has questions. Gina's here as a phenomenal resource for what it looks like to be a charter member. So we're happy to handle any questions that you may have. Excellent. I see a few messages in the chat saying that they would love to become a charter member. So that's great, please email me. Um, the 2 p.m. event is Opportunity Knox. It's called Opportunity Knox. Again, it's hybrid as well. And Dana will be talking, will be discussing how to change challenges and obstacles into opportunities. And that is a workshop style. That's not a lecture event. So there's actually going to be some breakouts, some group discussion. I think that would be a very interactive event if we get a good crowd so that we'll, we'll get people intermingling. Have you, uh, Jen, have you checked out the podcasting club in the UAE? I haven't had a chance to, but I want to, to see kind of their structure, but uh, I'll, that's on my list for sure. Yeah, it'd be really great to, I can, if you want, I can make an introduction. If you want, I can send an email and if you want, I can, uh, I can certainly. That would be you. great. I would I appreciate that, Greg. Right? I, because of the time that it's at, I, I, I usually have a conflicting, it's like for you guys, I think it would be 11, yeah, 11 a.m. I think I worked out the time on Mondays, first and third. 
yeah, I'd be happy to uh, to do that. They, uh, I've attended a couple of meetings. They do a phenomenal job. They do focus in on the podcasts. Uh, they get people in from all over the world. There were a number of people in there from uh, from India, from the U.S., Canada, New Zealand. There were some people that were there. It was in the middle of the night for them. How about a podcast from Jasper? That's a great idea. <laughs> Jasper, beautiful mountains. It's about a four-hour drive for me. Tommy, where are you, Tommy? <laughs> oh, D27 and 36, okay. Um, yeah, I think we are good. So thank you all for who's remained for coming, but um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you at the 2 p.m. event. And Greg, again, thank you for doing this workshop. It was an absolute, absolute pleasure. Thank you very much and all the best with your, your new club and the session this afternoon. Thank Take you. Bye-bye. Bye everyone, hope to see you too. Um, Ida, to become a charter member, we, well, this, will be an open club, a new club. So basically there are no requirements. It'll be an open club. The only thing we need to have is 17 brand new members. So they essentially would have to be new members or transferring members, 17 of them at least. So the fees, there are fees. There's 125 charting fees plus the $20 new member fee for new member, $45 renewal fee. Uh, again, this will be discussed at the interest meeting, but I just wanted to put out the idea to let people know that this is something we're gonna be doing. And Mary, it looks like you might be wanting to say something, but the you're muted. All right. And then Ida, I think I gave you the uh, link for the 2 p.m. event if you were interested in attending that as well. All right, see you everyone.